hello, hello. This is Elle's Committee from Venus Crafty Corner. And we are getting started on one of the Dark Macabre journals. Uh, <clears throat> this one started its life as a cute little card box. Uh, it had some little pockets here, some about half inch thick pockets with little cards in them. It's very cute. Uh, kind of sea shells and stuff. You can still see there's some seashells right there. And, uh, well, that doesn't work for Dark Macabre. So, bleh. Off it went. Um, so, I decided that this was going to be the cover for the first journal. So, I went ahead and I lightly sanded it. I put on some white gesso. I lightly sanded it again. Some more white gesso. Lightly sanded it one more time. Then I went ahead and hit it with the Liquitex black gesso. And when it was dry, I took it outside. And I kind of stood it up like this on Hubbard's workbench out in the backyard. And I got together my special blend of paints and chemicals. I'm not telling you what's in it. Um, that I used to make my blood splatter. And then I splattered the crap out of it. And it comes out looking like this. See, I don't want it to be like in your face red. I want it to look like real actual blood red. So I do have a special mix of colors that I use to get this. And um, then I brought it in, let it dry. <clears throat> then there was the varnish debacle. Um, got it varnished, finally. And then I went over it and made sure that I didn't have any spots that were showing or that needed touching up or anything. Because Harry has a habit of touching things and scratching at them sometimes, you know. And so he, like, messes stuff up. Now, I'm not worried about a little bit of white or anything coming through here because I'm going to probably end up covering this. But uh, I did paint about... Kind of half an inch, three quarters of an inch all the way around on the inside. Because I am going to be putting fabric inside here. But I did want to build up this stem, this, uh, you guys know what this thing is, right? The spine. Um, <laughs> I did want to build up the spine a little bit. So I got out my ruler and I measured my spine from top to bottom, which is about seven inches. And I decided I wanted to commit about a quarter of an inch on each side. So I went and found myself some chipboard that was about, oh, six and a half inches right there. It was just a scrap of chipboard that I had. It's kind of thin. <clears throat> and I measured it across. And across it is about ooh, just over, right at like one and a half for this centerpiece. So I put my chipboard into my guillotine and I went just one little sixteenth of a mark to the side of that so that I had a piece that I could put in here that would allow me to close the book easily. Okay. And so I, I always do that. I always kind of rough fit to make sure that when I stand the book up, it's going to fit. Now I think I'm going to shave these just a hair more than where they're at. <clears throat> so I'm going to get my guillotine out. Move my book. I'll just place this in here. And get this right where I want it. And you can see I'm just taking a very tiny little piece off of there. Um, Okay, now, I have two of them. Out of the way. All right, so now I have two of these. Let's go ahead and dry fit that. See how that works. It's good top to bottom. All right, and there's no resistance when I stand it up. So now I'm going to adhere these two pieces together and then I'm gonna put them into the book. So, what I use is, um, it's a mix of clear Elmer's glue, some Aileen's, and water, okay? Water just makes it easier to spread. The Aileen's dries pretty quick, and the Elmer's just kind of locks it in. So, I'm just going to paint that on there. And then I'm just going to line up my two pieces. 
put them together and I'm gonna put a couple of clamps on these and I'm just gonna let them sit for just a few minutes and dry. And once I have them and they are dry, then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna glue them in the center here, okay? So once I have that all done, I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my book and have my piece glued up and I decided I wanted to line this in fabric and I was going to do it in red and then I said, you know, no, it needs to be more than that. So I decided I was going to go with these skulls and hmm. okay, this is my front, so I want it to go this way. So I measured a piece of six and a half that's just going to cover the uh, spine that reinforcement that we put in and then it's going to fit in here beautifully. Okay, so what I'm going to do is glue this down using the same mixture, uh, the Aliens mixture that I use to put in the spine reinforcement. And of course, this is book cloth. It's not regular fabric. This is book cloth in here. And I'm going to put this, glue this book cloth down. And then I have decided that this book is going to get some book corners. And I have a couple here, a couple of different ones. And so I want to decide which ones I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and move this for a second. Now, I have a couple of choices. I can use these brass ones that I have. Hmm. Or I can go with these. I kind of like those better. So I think I'm going to go with those instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, wait a minute. There's one more choice. Yeah, I have these. Uh, I think I'm going to go with these. All right, so I'm going to get my book cloth put on, and then I'm going to get my book corners on top of that, and then I will be right back, and we will take a look at the next step, which is going to be building our template to put in our signatures. We're going to get those cut down and get those put in. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is my front. This is the back. These are my book corners, nicely put on, okay? And when I open it up, I have most of my skulls going in the right direction. Now they all kind of go in different directions, but the one in the center is facing them the correct direction. Now I took a piece of file folder and I cut a piece that was six and a half inches long and it is one and three eighths inch wide so that it fits perfectly in my spine, okay? So this is going to be my template for where I'm gonna punch my holes. Now I have three signatures on here that I, I hope to put into this book. So the first thing I need to do is I need to divide this into thirds. And to do that, we're going to do some real basic math here. We're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have eleven eighths on here. So let's go in two and a half. And then we'll go one, two, and a half. And then one, two and a half. Let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty even to me. Okay. So one, two, three. Those are my three marks. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go one, two and a half. One, two and a half. One, two and a half. And I'm going to do it one more time at the bottom. Two and a half. Two and a half. 
two and a half. Okay, then I'm simply going to take my ruler, line it up on those three marks. And I'm going to draw a line. And I'm going to draw a line on each one of these. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. This is a guide. Okay, so there's my three pieces. Now, this is six and a half inches long, and I want to come down about half an inch on either side. So, I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to put a mark here. Line this up again, and here, that's just at the half inch. And I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. Put the ruler here. We're going to go to half inch and we'll back it up and we'll do the half inch again. And then again here, I'm just going to draw a line across. Okay. Now, I should have five and a half inches between those two marks. Okay. So I just come in one inch, one inch, two inch, two inch, a half inch, a half inch. This is my center point. Okay. It's two and three quarters. So then I'm going to come down here, line up two and three quarters, draw a line. All right, so now I have my top to my bottom. So that's only for a three hole. So I'm just going to do the same thing again. I'm going to come in here and we are at two and three quarters. It's an inch, that's an inch, a quarter and a quarter. And this is my midpoint. So I'm just roughing this, okay? Move this over, rough, come over here, do the same thing. and then just draw a line. So now I have a five point. Now one side has to be my top and one ha side has to be my bottom. So at the top, I'm just gonna put a T. That's my top, okay? And now I'm gonna fold this. along the first line. Along the second line, turning it around, I'm gonna fold it on that last line. This allows me to use my bone folder to actually press this line in and make sure that it's really straight. so that when I put this into my signatures, I can fold it, okay? All right. Now I'm gonna get out a piece of foam and my awl. Now every place that there is a hole, a, a cross, I'm gonna pop a hole. Okay, now I have a template. So if I bring my book back, and I go ahead and put this in here, and I get it in here even, top and bottom, and I use a clamp to hold it, top,
and bottom. Now I have my piece in place that I can use to punch the holes into my book cover. So I'm just going to set this again right here. And I'm just going to put in my holes. Now remember, I'm going through two pieces of chipboard, a piece of fabric, a piece of tissue paper, some adhesive, a lot of adhesive, Wow, <laughs> uh, the padding that was in the book cover, gesso, paint, several layers of varnish, and I want to make sure that I can move straight down. All right, so now I have all my holes here. Now you're not gonna see them on that side, but you can see them on this side, okay? See all my holes here? Those are all the holes that I'm gonna use to stitch this together. I'm gonna get rid of the book cover for a second and we are going to uh, clean this off real quick and then I'm gonna bring out the signatures that I have cut for this book and we are gonna go ahead and get started stitching those in. I'll be right back. All right, so we have created a template for our book. We have cut our signatures and I'm now going to kind of press in my creases here for where these go. All right. So I have one, two, three, and four, and I've numbered them. One, two, three, and four. Now I could put left, middle, back, front, middle, back, left, middle, right, whatever I wanted to do. Um, but I like to use a one, two, three, and I have these little clips that are marked one, two, and three. So generally what I do is I take the first piece and I fold it. Then I take my first signature and I put my guide into my signature. Kind of fold it over to make sure that I've got it right in the fold, okay? Once I've got it right in the fold and it's even top and bottom where it's supposed to be, I'm gonna clip that in there and then I'm gonna put my holes in. Okay, now I'll remove the bottom clip, take the top clip off. You can see my holes are right down the middle. I'm gonna put my clip number one on pack number one that I marked with line number one. Okay, that corresponds to number one, number two, and number three in my book. Now I'm going to fold number two. I'm gonna take my second signature I'm gonna open it in the middle and I'm gonna place in my piece. Again, I'm gonna make sure that it's even top and bottom, making sure that that's all the way down in there. I'm gonna take clip number two, clip it in. And clip it in at the bottom, making sure that I have 
that crease in my fold. Bring it up here, take my all, and I'm now going to go into the number two set of holes. Okay, and take the piece off the bottom, top, remove that, holes are down the center line, put clip number two on set number two. All right, I'm going to do the same thing one more time. I'm going to fold it at three. I'm going to take three, put three in, making sure that I have it even top and bottom. And then I'm going to put my holes in. them right down my center line, fold that up, put my three on, okay? Now, I know that I have my numbers facing me, and with my numbers facing me, that's the top of my page. So I will put these in the correct order, one, two, and three, and I'm going to keep them in that order, okay? Just makes life easier. Now, we're done with all this other stuff, so I'm going to get rid of the template. I'm going to get rid of all of this other stuff, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now it's time to stitch in the signatures. Again, you can put this out as a reference to remember one, two, three, left, middle, right, whatever. I have my signatures numbered, so I'm going to start, um, I'm going to start in the back. So I'm going to take number three, and I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to place it here. Now, generally... It's about three and a half times for your cording on a sharp needle. So I'm going to go through my signature and I'm going to find my first hole. And I'm starting on the inside, okay? There's a reason. I'm starting on the inside because I want my strings tied on the inside. It doesn't matter if you use three holes, five, seven, or nine, or eleven, or whatever. First off, it has to be an odd number. Second, you want them evenly spaced. And third, you have to decide, do you want your strings on the outside of the book or the inside of the book? If you want them on the inside, you start on the inside. If you want them on the outside, start on the outside. It's up to you. Okay? Doesn't matter where you start. Depends. All it matters is, do I want my strings tied on the inside or my strings tied on the outside? All right. So on this one, I'm going to tie them on the outside. So I'm going to come in through this center hole. And this just makes it easier for you to see the needle come through. And then I'm going to put the needle through that center piece. Okay. Bring it up. Now, I don't want to bring it all the way through. So what I do is I take one of these binder clips and I just clip it, or whatever clip you want to use, I just clip it on here, and then I just kind of wrap the thread around a little bit. The whole idea is just so that I have a weight on there, okay? That way when I pull up my thread, I can't go past that point. And then up or down, your choice, I'm going to go up one, come out through that hole, I'm going to go up to the next hole. I'm going to go through the hole, which is going to correspond with the hole on my paper. And I'm going to come back this way. Okay. I'm going to snug it up and I'm going to come back and go right back through that hole again. The one that I went through the first time. So we're going to go back down through that hole and back out through the back of the book and snug it down. Then we're going to go back through the hole here, okay? So at this point, I will take this off, pull this out of my way, put my needle back through that hole. 
Okay. And again, I'm going to snug it up. Now I can pull both cords though. Okay. So now I have it nice and snug. I'm going to go down to the next hole. We're going to go out that hole, out the back, down to the bottom hole, back in. It's going to bring us through the paper. Nice and snug. Back down through the hole we went down before. And that ends us up on the outside of the book. Now we're going to take this piece. We're going to come up and go under those two. Bring it out. And we're going to pull in opposite directions. Okay. The cord from the bottom goes down. The cord that was at the top comes up. We're going to pick this up. It's going to be right over left, left over right, and I like to do it twice, so right over left, left over right, and then I'm going to cut these. Scissors. All right. So we have the last signature, the back signature in our book is now in the book. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put the next two signatures in the exact same way and I'll be right back. All right. So I have three signatures sewn into my book and they are in here very nicely. There's plenty of room in this book because of the nature of this, because it had these big pockets in it. It's designed to sit kind of open like this. So this is a very good book to be doing this with. Now, I have all of my strings coming out the back here, and I am probably going to be covering this with a piece of lace. So I will probably cut these off. So what I need to do is make them as flat as possible. And that's where my bone folder comes in. And basically, I'm just going to flatten them out, kind of press them down and flatten them out because I'm going to probably cut these off and I'll be covering this uh, with a piece of lace. But that is for another day. Now, three signatures, lots of pages, okay? Just make sure we get everything here nice and straight. You don't belong there. And to do that, I'm simply going to fold it over and just hit it with my bone folder again. Now that it's in the book, get them nice and laid in here straight the way that I want them. And of course, they're not going to be perfect. This is a handmade book. Do not get down on yourself if they're not perfect because it is handmade. You just want them to sort of look, you know, like they're in alignment. And let's face it, you're going to put lace or trim on the edges here. Um, you're going to decorate these. You're going to put pockets in. Nobody's going to see if it's a smidge off or if you have this little piece like this where the cutter was a little jagged, okay? That's all going to get covered. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about that too much, okay? What you're looking for really is that when this book stands up, your pages look nice and even. And that when you look at it this way, there's nothing hanging out. That's what you're looking for, okay? All right, so the next time that we do one of these, we are going to be putting um, decorations on our pages. We're going to be putting some pockets into this. We are going to be putting in some journaling cards and some tags and all that fun stuff. And so we will get to that the next time. Until then, if you haven't done so, do me a favor, please, and hit the red button and subscribe, like me, ring my bell, and share me with all your friends. Bye-bye.